12 sinful roots in the heart. You ever wonder what's going on inside your head? Do you ever have vague feelings of guilt or wonder why you do the things you do? We're going to be looking at 12 sinful roots in the heart. Let's learn how to acknowledge our sins, calling it what God, Elohim in the Hebrew, calls it. So you can confess it to Him and then walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number one, anger. Anger occurs when our desires, whether unrighteous desires or righteous desires, have not been met. The loss of those desires cause a grievous displeasure that can be manifest in various ways. Although anger can be righteous, we most often have and thus display unrighteous anger. Unrighteous anger is usually accompanied by pride and selfishness. Contrary to anger or meekness, self-control, peace, and patience. Anger in the heart says things such as, I have a bad attitude. I'm not getting what I want. I am bummed, grumpy, irritated, disappointed, or frustrated. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Also, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. Number two, anxiety. Anxiety is worry. As a care or concern for something to the extent that it disturbs or troubles our soul. It is taking thought to something so much that it encumbers our mind. Anxiety causes fear, sorrow, fretting, and dread because we believe that God will not care for our situation appropriately. Anxiety in the heart says things such as, I can't stop thinking about it. I'm stressed out. God is not taking care of this the right way. Let's read Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Also Proverbs chapter 12 verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop but a good word maketh it glad. Number three, bitterness. Bitterness is a form of anger toward God and others that brings despair of soul. It is a hatred of others and a lack of forgiveness of their wrongs, whether those wrongs are real or perceived. Our bitterness grieves that situation that has not been made right according to our expectations. Bitterness causes us to miss out on God's grace in daily life and it spreads trouble to others. Contrary to bitterness are love, joy, and meekness. Bitterness in the heart says things such as, I want others to suffer for their wrongs against me. I hate them. God has done wrong to me. I cannot get over this. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Mashiach's sake hath forgiven you. Let's also take a look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, does any man fail the grace of God? Does any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled? Number four, despair. Despair is a state of complete hopelessness that fails to have a biblical, eternal perspective. Despair is the fixation upon earthly, temporal situations that can cause dank, a downcast spirit and utter discouragement. It's a sin of unbelief in the fact that God has always acts and assists in a way that is for 
our absolute good and total benefit. Contrary to despair is the faith and confidence in God's sovereign goodness and leads to joyful hope and patient endurance. Despair in the heart says things such as, God cannot help me. My life is hopeless. I cannot go on. God is doing wrong to me. Let's look at Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the feed fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yahweh God is my strength, and he will make me my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me walk upon high places. To the chief singers are my stringed instruments. Number five, envy. Envy is pain and grief that is felt when we observe another's good or happiness. Envy often manifests itself in anger and contention towards others, wanting to cause harm to their good. It is a lack of contentment that robs us of joy, delight in God, and thankfulness. Envy usually occurs in conjunction with the sin of greed, pride, and selfishness. Envy in the heart says things such as, I just hate them. I hate that others have good things and are happy. I would be happy if I had what someone else has. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy is the rottenness of the bones. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Number six, fear. Sinful fear is similar to anxiety and worry in that it is a troubling of our souls. Sinful fear leads to disobedience of God's commandments because it can paralyze us to inaction or cause us to seek our own solutions outside of God's ways. Contrary to fear or confidence and trust in the person of God that leads to obedience to his word. Fear in the heart can say things such as, God let things get out of control. I have to escape this situation. I can't obey God because I have to protect myself. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I commanded thee? Be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for Yahweh thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Let's also look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Number seven, fear of man. Fear of man is the anxiety of being rejected. It is when we strive to gain favor and acceptance from others or are overly concerned about what others think of us. Fear of man is a self-serving and self-exhorting pride which robs the glory that is God's alone. Gall and envy are often accompanied with this sin. Contrary to fear of man or humility, the fear of God, goodness, kindness, and love. Fear of man in the heart says things such as, I am more concerned with what others think of me than what doing what God says is right. I want to please people so much that they like me. I want recognition and the attention from others. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoso puts his trust in Yahweh shall be safe. Number eight, greed. Greed or covetedness comes from two different Greek words, one meaning more and the other to have. Greed is craving to have more. 
It's synonymous with evil desire and lust. It's a strong craving to increase fleshly pleasures or to satisfy ourselves with earthly goods rather than eternal treasures. Covetedness leads to other sins, including envy and guile. Contrary to greed are contentment and thankfulness, which are satisfied in God alone. Greed in the heart says things such as, I want more. I am not content with what I have. Having more will satisfy. Let's look at Luke chapter 12 verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetedness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Number 9. Gal. Gal is from the Greek word dolos, which means to bait. This word means to scam, scheme, lie, and deceive. Gall is a sly deceitfulness in which we manipulate and seek to cover our true motives and behavior. It is often accompanied by the sins such as selfishness, greed, and fear of man. Contrary to God or the fear of God, humility, and love. God in the heart says things such as, I don't want to tell the whole truth. I scheme and deceive to hide my true desires. I will manipulate others to get what I want. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Wherefore, putting away all lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Number 10. Laziness. To be lazy is to be slack, idle, and slothful. Laziness is a neglect of responsibility and diligence. It's a form of selfishness that serves our desires of the sinful flesh and fail to consider both the interest of others and the consequences of the future. Contrary to laziness are faithfulness and good works. Laziness in the heart says things such as, I don't want to do what I know I'm supposed to do. I don't want to be diligent. I'll just do whatever I want. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise, which have no guide, overseer, or roar. Provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Number 11. Pride. Pride is very likely the foundation of all other sins. It is a high view of our own worth opinions and abilities. It is a self-worship in which we exalt ourselves above God's person and purposes. Pride is also a sin against people because it is a failure to love and serve them. Contrary to pride or humility, meekness, goodness, kindness, and love. Pride in the heart says things such as, my way is always right, Others are wrong. I want attention and recognition. I have to be right. I am better than others. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And finally, number 12, selfishness. Selfishness is loving our own life so much that there is a lack of love and service toward God and others. It's an active pursuit of self-satisfaction and pleasure that ignores the needs and interests of others. 
Selfishness robs us of thankfulness and also the ability for self-control. Contrary to selfishness are humility, love, and kindness, and goodness. Selfishness in the heart says things such as, I have to look out for what I want and need. What I want is more important than the needs of others. I want what I want when, I, when and how I want it. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Let's look also at Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We have just looked at 12 sinful roots in the heart. Anger, anxiety, bitterness, despair, envy, fear, fear of man, greed, guile, laziness, pride, and finally selfishness. By the power of Yahweh's Spirit, let's seek to get rid of these sinful roots in our heart and try to develop with His grace and His mercy the 12 righteous roots in the heart, which start with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, and self-control. Also, the fear of Yahweh, thankfulness, and humility. We pray that this study has blessed you. Shalom. Yahweh's Learning Channel thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen, or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.